My name is Stephen Justin Smith. Um, I'm 45 years old. I'm born. I'm born in Toronto at Toronto Wellesley Hospital. Um, both my parents were drug addicts. My dad was a pimp. My mom was a street level dealer slash user. Uh, I, I grew up actually uh, in Jamaica for a couple of years because I got uh, caught at, in school at junior kindergarten. I brought for, for show and tell some hypodermic needles and uh, they called my grandmother. My grandmother took custody of me and then she sent me to Jamaica because she had to work an afternoon shift. She couldn't trust the babysitter for me. So she sent me to live with one of her sisters in Jamaica. And then um, that time of my life, I really don't remember too much of, but uh, I remember departing from Toronto, Pearson and landing in Jamaica, Lake Jamaica. I rode the plane alone, actually. My grandma wrote a gentleman a letter and gave him the permission to watch me while I was on the plane. Um, I came back to Toronto when I was 16 because my aunt got shot after church one day. And uh, my grandma just wanted me back home, home anyway. Things weren't, I was letting her know I was unhappy on the phone from time to time. You know, I was getting abused, like physically. I felt too much, like I would get reprimanded at school and then go home and get a beating by my aunt. And then when my uncle would come home, my cousins would tell my uncle and then my uncle would give me a beating as well. So it's like, uh, I, I, I wasn't liking it. I felt it was really unfair. Plus, I, I was white, right? But um. But you are Jamaican. No, no. I'm born in Toronto. I'm born in Canada. Where are your parents from? My 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 mom's Jamaican and my dad's Nova Scotian. Oh, okay. My mom's mom's Jamaican as well. Um. So I was living with my grandmother in Markham. I didn't know anything about drugs or alcohol. Like, I wasn't involved in that scene at all. I went to Catholic school. It was a goody-goody. Prep boy. You know, like, uh, and then um, I would come down to my mom's here in Parkdale on the weekends. She would let me stay out past the street lights, you know. And I picked up smoking cigarettes. Like, I, I hung out with the the boys at the end of my street at the park. We called ourselves the Fuller Park Boys, like a little gang, right? Um, I skipped school, I went to my first class, which was my homeroom class, which was cosmetology. I learned how to cut hair, I like to cut hair. Some people out here know me as barber, because I, I do cut hair. Um, and then, one summer, I just decided to move down here with my mom. And my grandmother warned me and said, don't do it, you're gonna turn out to be like your mom, a drug addict. Which my mom was for the duration of her, her, her life. God rest her soul, she, she died a couple years back. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, so now when I call home to my grandma, my grandma kind of says shit like that, like, See, I told you you're gonna be just like your mother. Turn out to be like my mother. And my mother was smarter than her brother, my Uncle Clive. And he's actually an actuary accountant today. Just bought a Jaguar truck. Has a 10 bedroom home in Kitchener Waterloo. You know? So it goes to show, show you. The same thing, I used to help all three of my cousins do their schoolwork in Jamaica. One of them's a doctor. One of them works on airplanes and the other one's like a, a, a architect. What so, do you feel like the difference between you and them was? Like? I guess the discipline, because they had the mother and father figure, you know? Like out there, it's, you learn your schoolwork quick, because you get a licking if you don't, if you get an answer wrong. You get it, you get it, you get the strap, right? Like, um, or you go to the principal and get the strap, like hold your hands out and, get smacked 10 times, it fucking hurts. I used to get hit in my legs a lot, so I, I asked to get a, we wore khaki uniforms and I, I, I had my aunt 
tailor me, tailor make me a pair of pants. Because my legs were just bruised, like the bruises would show on my legs and stuff because I was of a white skin color, right? So, but I was hot, stifling hot, like. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I had, I had an ex-girlfriend who worked the streets too, and we kind of had a separation period where I, I ended up meeting another woman which lived in Barrie, Ontario, and I moved out there with her and my life changed for like 10, a good 10, 11, 12 years. In a good way? Very good way, yeah, I got a job, I was off drugs. Uh, I wanted to become a father, um, but we, we waited five or six years before, like, we just wanted to be financially ready. So, uh, like I, I've had businesses well, a business, and I, I would subcontract for Madame Homes, doing roofs and siding. Uh, and one day I just, um, not had a, re, a relapse, but I was just doing more and more drugs. That Barry didn't, Barry didn't have enough drugs for for me, so I, I I ran down here to Toronto. I left a nice townhouse, beautiful woman, with kids jumping in my bed to wake me up to living in a rest bed site beside a stinky man that farts all night and, and his feet are just horrific. Now I'm at something like this where I'm at a tent because I've been discharged so many times from the rest bed sites for just feeling that I'm not being treated properly or you know, the last place I was at, hey, can, can you, hey, I don't got no socks. I'm trying to record something here. No, can, you, talking, can, can, can you do that shit over, over on that side? Anyways, we're like, uh, I've been discharged and don't feel to go back to these places, so I'm, uh, I'm out here. I could be in a hotel too, but that I felt too was like a setup to be murdered or like, I do drugs and maybe just be in my room one day and just do a little too much or get the wrong batch. Is that what you have around your, your shoulder there? Is that Narcan? Yeah, yeah. That's Narcan, yeah. How often do you have to use that? I, I've had to use it a couple times. Like, last month I had a bad streak where I was getting, like, I don't know, a drug, maybe the drug, and me weren't agreeing. There was something in it that would just make me clam, seize up, clam up blackout not really an OD but yeah I have I have OD before in the past and woken up in the hospital and uh, I actually just run run away from the hospital because you go through withdrawal when you get hit with Narcan that you feel awful you need to get high again to feel right from the moment I open my eyes I have to call a dealer and get some something do you ever worry you're gonna die? No, like I'm a frugal user. Like you know, I test the first. I I go to injection sites usually, and I test most of my dope. So when I find out there's bullshit in the dope, I don't usually fuck with that dealer no more, right? So I'm looking for straight like fentanyl, car fentanyl. Fluoride, fentanyl fluoride or whatever they call it. I'm not looking for benzos and other things that'll knock me out where I pass out and wake up with no shoes on my feet. My money's gone. It, it, this is like the arena. You know what I mean? Like uh, you have to be on your toes 24 hours a day or you could get took, like you get robbed, stabbed, beat up. There's not a day gone by where I haven't seen a fight. Someone get their tooth knocked out of their head or fucking just for owing some money. Or yeah, what's it like living around here? Right? It's hectic. Very hectic. It's like a little community. Like it's not, not everyone gets along. You know, there's always that little clique that wants to pick on one guy or misery loves company, right? So. Do you have to carry anything for your protection or anything like that? I always carry shit, yeah. What's your go-to? I have like a little steel pole. 
Yeah, it's in my bag. I just pack, pack it away. But yeah, like I carry. I used to carry knives, but you know, they get stolen from me and shit. So what's like your everyday routine? Getting high. How do you do it? You gotta get money, right? I'm a mid, I'm, a, I'm a middleman. I know a lot of dealers. I know dealers that not you or him can just go talk to. They'll get in your fucking face smacked off, right? So that's my my little. But then again, I, I know people that I can give my money to, like certain women that will get me a lot more from their dealer. But it's just not the greatest shit, right? Or, or you get fucked over in the long run, like, you get promised your seven grams, but they come back with four, you know? Like, when you want it done, you gotta do it yourself. What about the barber shit? Mainly, I do that shit usually for free. But, I do have a couple of regulars that pay. Other, home, other homeless guys, too, that pay. Like, But um, most of them, I just, it's not a set price. They just give me what they have, or I get gifts, like, you know, barber rep stuff. Trade off. Yeah, like a mirror or so, a lot of bartering goes on. Like these, you know? So Nothing's bought up with straight up cash, really. It's always trade and barter. It's the word they use, barter. Like, trade you two pairs of shoes for two cool hats or like there's a lot of if you, if you really dig down in some of these tents there's some really expensive stuff around here like I'm talking signed hockey cards to jerseys that people find in the garbage to simple artwork a simple tin so if you were to give advice to somebody younger than you that was in a similar position as you what would your advice be Go to rehab very early, right off the hop. When what you if, what if it was even before that? When you realize you don't, when you realize you got 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 a pro, a problem, address it before it's too late. I walked up to detoxes and rehab centers, and at the door, turned around and ran away. Do you have any regrets about your your past? No. I think every, everything happens for, for, for a reason. Like, st I'm still very, very young. Like, how old are you? I'm 45. Like, there's still lots of life ahead of me. You what know? do you see for your future? Uh. Or what do you want? I think I think I'll be back home by next Chris, my next Christmas. Like, I'm on a waiting list now for for a rehab out in a row. Aurelia called Seven South. Then I'm gonna go. Like, I have a social worker that she'll get the call and then she'll come get me. And it just ha it just happens, right? And then I know from then there it'll be a, wait a waiting process. Once I call my girl and let her know I'm in treatment, she'll be like, call me tomorrow, you know, like, and she'll go through it with me. Probably pick me up at the door in the nine months when it's over. That's love. Because, yeah, I do need a stable place to live when I get out. Mind you, I have, it has happened up that way as well, but... Uh, so let's I don't see. know, my, I'm a father now. My kids fucking, I miss my kids bad, tremendously, so... If you have a message for them right now, what, what would you tell them? Yeah. Don't ever make a nickname called Da Vinci. Because you never break the code, you know. Like, just, just don't happen. You're not gonna be that Scarface you watch in the movie. You're not gonna be the big pun that got killed. Like, everyone's different in their own way. Everyone has their own life, their own path. You gotta do what you want from your heart. You can't follow somebody like that. Yeah, you can have somebody that you look up to, like Superman, but. 
I would hate for a child to walk by and look at me and say, think, hey, he wants to get a tattoo like me, or like I couldn't, I couldn't be that guy, like you know, like yeah, I, I probably could have been a pro athlete. I played hockey. I was fucking yanked off a house league team to play for a rep team that my grandma wouldn't even let me play on because it was too many days a week and she wanted me, my nose in the books than on the ice. But the, the coaches came to my door and was like, we'll pick him up, we'll drive him. You know, no cost. That, that shit was thousands of dollars. My grandma just scraped together $230 for me to play house league for the year, you know? Like I remember I played it a season without elbow pads and chest pads because I didn't, couldn't afford them. Didn't have the money. So, <laughs> like, you got these guys. Uh, and nowadays the drugs is getting more social. Like crystal meth is smoked on the regular in the open. Marijuana is now. It's not two days go by where I can't smoke a joint. I can t find two big roaches on the ground and there, there I am. I'm, I'm smoking a, a joint. Or go to a spot where guy, I know guys smoke frequently and they drop all kinds of bud. And that, you know, so. Everything's getting very social. How often do you use? How much do you spend a day on drugs? hundred bucks. That's a good amount of money that... If not more. If, if there was more around, I would probably spend more. Right? I, I can make that in 10 minutes. Right? Like, but I can also spend it in two, 10 seconds. Right? So what do you do for like food and showers and clothing? Showers and clothing. I, I like use drop-in centers or... You know, sometimes I luck out to get a condo check for a night. Who knows, right? Some, you know, there, there's some caring women out there. Like, and when's the last time you spoke with your kids? Uh, I'd say a month ago. A month. Yeah. That's not bad. How I was at, I was actually up there prior to that. Cut. I gave them both haircuts. Nice. Mm hmm. And then um, we we're supposed to do a Ripley's thing, but. You know, it's tough for my, my, my girlfriend, like, it's a long drive, so it's some money too. Well, one of them doesn't want to come, you know. Like, my, my daughter is, is kind of uh, doing a lot of alone time now, you know. Oh, I hate you to her brothers, and it's going through that phase, but I told my girlfriend the same thing. I was like, hey, you did the same thing with, with your brothers when you met me, so. This was the first Thanksgiving too, I didn't go home. How did that feel? It was terrible, terrible. But, I don't know. Just because I'm, I'm embarrassed. Like I know I feel, I feel malnutrition, like they can tell. Like my, my grandmother, my girl's grandmother will be like, you're skinny in the face. So. Yeah. But yeah. Got any message for the people? No, not really. Just, I don't know. Don't be so judgmental and send support if, if you can. Like, I see a lot of these stores throw stuff out at night that they could just come run over here or even run into a guy in the corner. <clears throat> a lot of, you know, people don't just say hi anymore. You know? So tell people where they can find you if they want to come find you, give you anything, or help you out. I'm usually I'm usually in Chi in Chinatown, Augusta, Spadina, Dufferin and King. I grew up in Parkdale, so I um, I always go back to my roots. Like. So what kind of shit were you doing as a kid in Parkdale? I, then I was just playing basketball at the rec center, selling crack. Uh, I started smoking crack too, How but did that but happen? like only like I'm on like party nights, you know. Like my boys would snort coke and I would smoke some rock. 
you know. But I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to hide away and do it though, because they did, they were against that shit, right? <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's basically all I did then. Played basketball, sold crack, hung out at the park, park. In the in the winter, I would go to Dufferin Park and play ho- hockey outside. I'm a diehard ho- hockey player, man. Like, I didn't have the people come and ask me to wrap it up, like. Cause I'd, I'd sneak on the ice and I'd just be too loud. There's a building right beside it, right? Night. Yeah. yeah, I play it. I play hard. Right? We got a couple sticks here. We sometimes play, you know, three on three. Explain your tats, man. People would so come. Some Asian writing. Uh, so some of them are, these are all homemade, like done in the pen. I've done a three year pen stint for like robberies and thefts and stuff like that. We got caught in, call, in Collingwood, Ontario. So, those so are all like, jail that's just the, the wall, yeah, behind the wall. The area code I was in, Barry 705. I'm sleeved up, I got eight up here, stuff like that. What's the 13th one? 13 and a half is 12 jurors, one judge, half a chance. It's like jail scene. What's on your hand? That's like the crew I was. I used to roll with when I was a fuller boy. Like Fuller boy? Yeah, I was like, you know, thought I was a Scotian prince. And uh, the Asian stuff? Oh, the Asian stuff is like um, thug life, like underground society. You always been like that? Yeah, yeah. I've been down here, like I said, when I was 16, 15. Like, when I came back from Jamaica, this is where I pretty much landed. I was, I was in Markham for a, cu- a couple of weeks before I, I rebelled and split, came down here with my mom, right? Just to stay out later, where the street likes to be, you know? My grandma was very strict. I'd be playing ball hockey with my friends in the street and she would come and get me to bring me home. You know, out of all the parents, it was mine. They would come and fucking spoil the fun. So, that was just because she wanted me in bed on time so I could wake up for school, right? So, I guess it was all for the better, but. Where's your tent, bro? Right here. Right here right now. Somebody's in there? Yeah, it's my buddy. It's like a shared tent. Because okay. most of the time I I don't even sleep. Like, I, I can honestly say I'm scared in there at night. Like they've been set on fire before and shit. So on Cameron got caught. Look at that tree, it's still black. Yeah, people burn us out and shit, right? Like, some people got enemies. We all have to pay. We all get, you know? 